This unit will look at sampling and in particular when different types of sampling are best applied in different scenarios. Understanding this will help you to justify your own sampling approach for your own proposed research. The objective for this session is to review the different types of sampling procedure. So when it comes to research, it's possible to do a consensus whereby we'd ask everybody in the population that we're interested in researching, or we can select only a sample, a certain proportion of the people in the population, and this is the process of sampling. Realistically, when it comes to research you will be doing for your own project, you're not going to be able to ask absolutely everybody that you're interested in, so you're more likely to take a sampling approach, selecting only a certain proportion of the people you're interested in researching. So to start with a few key terms, we have the population of a sampling frame, which is everybody we're interested in researching. And then we will select a sample from within this population or sampling frame. So why sample? Time and cost. Put simply, these practicalities mean that often in business research, we do not have the time or the money to be able to research absolutely everybody in the population that we're interested in. And if we select a sample of the population we're interested in, we hope we can generalize the findings to the rest of the population we haven't researched. And this is particularly important if our research is seeking generalizability, which much quantitative research does. So when it comes to sampling, we have two main types of sampling. The first is probability or representative sampling. And here the chance or probability of each case being selected from the population is known and is usually equal. Or we have non-probability or purposeful sampling. Here the probability of each case being selected from the total population is not known. So there are these two key sampling pathways and there is often different words used in the literature for the different pathways. So the first way, probability sampling, can also be referred to as random sampling and representative sampling. Whereas non-probability sampling can also be referred to as non-random sampling and purposeful sampling. So probability sampling, defined as one in which every member of a population has a known chance of being selected. And because we know what chance of probability each respondent or case has of being selected, it means we can work out sampling error and sampling error can be determined, making it possible to generalize results to larger population with some confidence of being correct if we know how big the population is and we randomly select a given amount of that population within our sample we can work out statistically the potential probability of an error and of course the more of the population we sample the smaller the potential for error can be and we can statistically work this out so why emphasize random sampling? Well, a representative sample has approximately the same characteristics of the population relevant to the research, so the whole population we're interested in. And a sample drawn at random is unbiased, hence no member has any more chance of being represented than others. So this means 
The sample is also likely to include the characteristics typical of the population if the characteristics are frequent in that population. So random sampling should give us a completely random and representative sample. On the other hand, non-probability sampling, often called purposeful sampling, particularly by qualitative researchers, seeks to do something different. So the logic and power of purposeful sampling derive from the emphasis on in-depth understanding. This leads to selecting information-rich cases for study in depth. Information-rich cases are those from which one can learn a great deal about the issues of central importance to the purpose of the research. This is where the term purposeful sampling comes from. So in other words, we're not looking to get a completely random sample, but we are deliberately and purposefully selecting members we are going to research in our sample who can give us the most information which will help us achieve the goals of our research and meet our research aim and answer our research questions. So here is a breakdown of the main types of sampling. So first of all, we have probability sampling. And there are three methods we have. Simple random sampling, where you have a list, the sampling frame of a list of the entire population, and then you pick cases at random from that list. Often a random number generator might be used. So you have the list, and then you pick randomly cases and respondents off that list. The second type of probability sampling is systematic. So again, you have this list of the population, your sampling frame, and you pick every nth case. So you might pick every fifth case on that list. So you go through that list and you send out your questionnaire or you contact every fifth person on that list. Or you could use the number of eight you pick every eighth person on that list. But rather than picking randomly, what you're doing is you're doing it systematically, picking every fifth, seventh, ninth case, whatever number you decide. Now, the final type of probability sampling we're going to discuss here is stratified random. Now, what we do here is we pick the relevant strata of the relevant characteristics within our population and sampling frame. And then we pick randomly from this strata of characteristics. So for example, we might know that our population is 70% male and only 30% female. So we would want to pick randomly 70% of our sample from male and 30% of our sample randomly to be female. We could have the relevant strata or characteristic to be something different. So it might be a type of employment, of a field of employment. And then we might look at our population and say that 70% of our population are in managerial professions. So we would then make sure we pick randomly for 70% of our sample to be in management jobs and 30% of our sample to be in non-management jobs. So when it comes to the main types of sampling in non-probability or purposeful sampling, the first we have is judgment sample. And what we're doing here is picking cases that serve our research aims. So we are judging the appropriateness of the respondents and cases we're picking to be appropriate for what we need to be able to answer our research questions and meet our research aim. The second type of sampling is snowball sampling. Now here, we identify initial case or respondent, 
and then ask that case respondent for recommendations for other cases. So it might be that we're looking for a particular type of senior executive. And if we can speak and locate this first type of senior executive, we might be able to interview them or collect data from them and then ask them for other recommendations of people we could contact who also meet our requirements. And we go through this process and we slowly build up a snowball of cases and respondents based on each case recommending more potential cases or respondents. The third main type of non-probability sampling is confirming and disconfirming cases. And here we pick cases or respondents who either confirm what we're trying to find out or disconfirm what we're trying to find out. So we're deliberately selecting cases against or with the topic being investigated. So these are extreme cases we're picking, either to confirm what's happening or to disconfirm what's happening. So we're selecting cases which are at either end of the spectrum. And the final type of non-probability sampling we're going to look at is convenience sampling. And here, we're just using the cases or respondents that are easily available. So we're not judging them to meet our requirements for our research. We're just going to the most convenient cases. So this would be rating outside a coffee shop and just asking to speak to every person coming out of the coffee shop. We are just asking people conveniently for our convenience to be part of our research and to be part of our sample. So now we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of both probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So the main advantages of probability sampling are that we can generalise statistically our results because our sample should be representative of the whole population. So this should be the least chance of bias. So therefore, it helps us to generalise our findings. Of course, this is particularly useful if we're conducting research from the positivist research philosophy, which seeks generalizability. Now, the main disadvantages with probability sampling is there's the need to identify a sampling frame of a list of the complete population because if we're going to randomly select or systematically select respondents we're going to need to have a list that we can randomly or systematically select them from. This can be difficult in certain fields because it's not always possible to get a complete list of everyone within the population we want to research. Also, probability sampling takes time, not only to get this list, but to contact these people can take time. And it's not appropriate for all research designs, particularly if we're looking for specialist cases, so confirming or disconfirming cases. If we are just going for representative people, we might not get the specialism and the particularism that we want within our research. So non-probability sampling, again, has advantages and disadvantages. So when it comes to advantages, it can be quicker. Not always, but it can be quicker if we are seeking to undertake a convenient sample or we're looking for judgment samples. It may be quicker to go to people we know who we judge fit our sample or just to conduct our research sample through convenience. You also don't need a sampling frame, which we've spoken of a minute ago, the difficulties in obtaining a sampling frame. And of course, this can be better for some research designs if we're looking for more extreme confirming or disconfirming cases. The disadvantages of non-probability sampling include you cannot generalize statistically to estimate margins of error within our research. 
because our sample isn't representative, so therefore it has an increased chance of bias. Now if we're coming from the interpretativist research philosophy, this might not be such a problem, because here we might be looking for contextualised depth of particular cases rather than generalizability. So how many cases do you need? When it comes to probability sampling, larger always equals better. It increases our chance to generalize and decreases our margin of error. So when we have considerations, we need to think about the population size. Of course, if the population size and the sampling frame is bigger, ideally we want a bigger sample from this population. Also depends on what confidence we want in the data and what tolerable amount of error we're willing to take within our research. Of course, the statistics to be performed will also depend on the size of our sample. Different statistical techniques require more or less data. And we'll cover this in more detail when we look at quantitative data analysis. And of course, we need to consider the response rate. It is not uncommon to only get a response rate of around 5% from a email survey. And if this is the case, we might need to send out a lot of questionnaires to actually get the response rate we require for our statistics. When it comes to non-probability sampling, there is no direct particular rules on the number of cases or respondents we should use. This is often dependent on the research objectives and what it is we're looking to achieve. We will discuss this more when we look at qualitative data analysis, but often the key goal here is saturation to make sure the same data is emerging from our data analysis. So, but when it comes to non-probability sampling, there's no direct rules because we're not so interested normally in generalizability. However, of course, we do often find times where we must use non-probability sampling to collect quantitative data. And when this is the case, we then need to consider some of the other considerations that we've discussed, such as what statistics will be performed. Because in an ideal world, we will use probability sampling when we're doing quantitative data analysis and statistical analysis. However, often this is not feasible. So we do also need to consider what amount of data we'll need for our statistics if this is the case. 